y'all, hey welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn and this is Here There Be Magic where we talk about the magic of all things storytelling. Happy Pride Month, everybody! I know I have been spending a lot of time on anticipated releases this month, but I did promise that I would be returning to Pride content, and what better way to do it than by with the Pride flag book tag. So this is a book tag that was originated by Spence from Common Spence. I will link to his original video down below. Each prompt in this book tag is inspired by a color from the Rainbow Pride flag, and draws inspiration from the original meaning of that color, what it represents for the LGBT community. This is the fifth year I will be participating in this tag, and every year I challenge myself to come up with a brand new set of titles. It used to be really difficult. It's getting a lot easier now that I am prioritizing reading queer books more and that there are more out there for me to choose from. So all of the books I will be mentioning today are ones that I've read within the last year, and I believe they all also released within the last year or so. Our first prompt is for the color red, which represents life. Pick a book with a spirited protagonist, totally proud of who they are, someone who gives you life. Previously, I've recommended Queens of Geek by Jen Wild, Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy, The Diviners by Libba Bray, and I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. This year, I'm recommending Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This adult romance features Dahlia and London who fall for each other while competing in the reality TV cooking competition, Chef Special. It's recently been established that I love a good reality TV show as the setting for a book, so of course I was going to fall in love with this one right away. I picked it for the red prompt because I feel like both Dahlia and London's stories revolve around them learning to be completely proud of themselves and who they are. Dahlia is trying to find herself post-divorce, and cooking has really helped with that, but going on to this nationally televised show to be judged by professionals sort of threatens the unsteady foundation that she's built for herself. Meanwhile, London is dealing with the fallout of coming out as non-binary, both to their family and to the wider world via the show. So for them, Chef Special isn't just about putting their cooking skills to the test, it's about proving all of the haters, including their own father and one of the other competitors, completely wrong. Next we have Orange, which represents healing. Previously, I've recommended The Raven King by Maggie Steve Otter, Don't Date Rosa Santos by Nina Moreno, The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Harmon, and Fire with Fire by Destiny Soraya. Pick a book that helped you find a deeper meaning or catharsis in your life. And for that, of course, I had to pick Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. It's honestly kind of a risk talking about this book because I did pretty fancy rainbow eye makeup and I tend to cry when I talk about Ophelia. This book follows high school senior Ophelia Rojas who in the weeks leading up to her senior prom begins questioning both her sexuality and her place in the world. Out of all the coming out narratives I've read and watched over the years, this is the one that speaks to me and my experience the most. My coming out story was a super anticlimactic one. None of my friends or my parents really gave a shit. They were happy for me. They've been completely supportive of me. I've had people in my life who are not that lucky, and I've always felt sort of bad that I was afraid to come out, even though I could be pretty safely sure there weren't going to be negative consequences. The thing that Ophelia helped me recognize and accept is that realizing you are not the person that everyone thought you were or even the person that you thought you were, is an inherently scary thing. We are all learning and growing and changing every day, and although that is beautiful, it can also be deeply terrifying, and it's nice to find comfort in stories that you can relate to and know that you are not alone in being scared. And that's what Ophelia after all this for me. Next we have yellow, representing sunshine. Pick a book that can brighten even your darkest day. Previously, I've recommended Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli, Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu, and Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. This year I'm recommending She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick. And look, it's yellow! 
This book follows Alex and Molly, two incoming freshmen at the University of Pittsburgh, who become unlikely friends when notorious flirt Alex agrees to help Molly get the girl of her dreams. I personally related to Molly on a lot of levels. She's starting college, very afraid that she's not going to be able to make friends, which was one of my biggest fears going into freshman year. She has figured out her sexuality at a young age, but has no clue how to go about dating, which same, but not knowing how to without offending her mother. From my experience, that's a pretty common diaspora struggle, wanting to reconnect with your roots without offending the people close to you who may not be as comfortable with doing that work. Not only is this an adorable sapphic rom-com that has some of my favorite tropes in it, it's also inspired by Allison and Rachel's real-life love story. The two of them are married, and they actually met on the University of Pittsburgh campus as undergraduates. So there's an extra level of cuteness to this whole story that just warms my heart so much. Next we have Green representing nature. Pick a book that is out of this world. Previously I've recommended Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, The Never Tilting World by Rin Chipeco, and Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This year I'm recommending So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lugans. This young adult fantasy novel follows former chosen one Arik who just successfully completed the prophecy that said he would be the one to save the kingdom. When he and his questmates discover that the princess who was set to inherit the throne has died, they step up to take charge and run the kingdom. As if that weren't already enough pressure, Arik discovers that as the new holder of the crown, he needs to get married as soon as possible or risk devastating magical consequences. This book is inspired by a myriad of classic quest fantasy tropes, but takes them and turns them on their head by starting the story where you would usually end the story, asking the question, what happens after Happily Ever After? For Arik, that's a desperate, oftentimes hilarious, search for a spouse, starting with his own former questmates. Next we have Blue representing peace. Pick a book where one of the main characters deals with a difficult truth. Previously, I've recommended They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman, You Should See Me in a Crown by Aaliyah Johnson, and She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan. This year, I'm recommending Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. This is a retelling of the Goose Girl fairy tale that follows Vanya, goddaughter of the low gods of luck and death, who for the past year has been using a magical necklace to pose as her former friend slash employer, Princess and Giselle, as a cover for stealing a bunch of riches from a bunch of entitled rich people to buy her own freedom. Unfortunately for Vanya, the jig might be up. First, Giselle's fiance returns from war and announces he's ready to get married. Then an annoyingly inquisitive junior detective shows up to investigate the string of robberies. And then Vanya steals the wrong artifact and gets herself cursed by another one of the gods. Things are not looking great for Vanya and she could probably probably use some help, but due to some understandably deep-seated trust issues, she's gonna struggle with that. This was hands down my favorite fantasy of 2021. I love the rich fairy tale inspired prose and world building of this book. I love Vanya so much. She's such a little gremlin and she's so hard to root for, but you want to anyway. And as a bonus, she and most of the rest of the main cast of characters are all canonically queer in some way. So Vanya and her love interest are both confirmed to be demisexual. And there's also an on-page sapphic relationship between two of my other favorite characters in the book. Last but not least, we have Purple, representing spirit. Pick a book that deals with religious and LGBTQ plus themes. Previously, I've recommended I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia, and The Henna Wars by Adiba Dragodar. This year, I'm recommending I Kiss Sarah Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This book follows 
follows aspiring valedictorian Chloe as she investigates the disappearance of Sarah Wheeler, the perfect daughter of their Christian high school's principal. Sarah didn't disappear without a trace. She left behind a series of clues that Chloe is determined to uncover. With the help of Smith, Sarah's quarterback boyfriend, and Rory, the boy next door who's always been in love with her. The one thing they all unexpectedly have in common? Sarah kissed them before she disappeared. If you're like me, and Chloe, and you love a good clue, a good puzzle, a good mystery to unravel at the heart of your stories, then I think you'll really enjoy this one. I picked it for this one because, of course, it addresses queerness and religion and the way that they intersect specifically within Southern communities. I don't want to say too much and risk giving something away, but as someone who has always felt sort of like an outsider in my small Southern community because I grew up without religion and still to this day don't practice any religion, religion, I really appreciated this perspective. I felt very seen by that aspect of the story, and I also felt very seen by all of the explicitly queer joy that exists in the story as well. Casey McQuiston is so, so good at giving us queer joy. And out of their three books, this one is by far my favorite. All right, there you have it. Pride Flag book tag take five. I seriously can't believe that I've been doing this for five years. In the beginning, I struggled to come up with enough books to do this tag, and this year, I struggled to narrow down the books that I wanted to include in this tag, and that is so amazing. Just five years, but also, oh my gosh, five whole years. If you like this video and you want to see more from my channel, remember to click that subscribe button. With that being said, my name is Evelyn. I make new videos every magical Monday and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.